on starting the second half. Our speaker is Maxime Fairon, uh, who will speak about non-commutative Poisson geometry and integrable systems. Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. And let me also thank you, the organizer, for this uh, nice workshop, because it's really cool to be able to do, a, let's say, a introductory mass in some way, uh, which is not directly losing us after five minutes. So it's good to be junior for that. Uh, okay, so uh, my idea today is to introduce non-commutative Poisson geometry. Okay, so it has to deal with double brackets that you may have heard about this morning, but I will introduce everything uh, you will see. And basically, I will spend about 15 minutes playing with this uh, non-commutative notion of Poisson geometry, because I think it's really fun. Uh, and you can really play with it. And then for the last 10 minutes, I will explain the relation to integrable systems and I will build on that uh, during the parallel talk. Okay, uh, so let's start. So what is the motivation of this uh, non-commutative Poisson geometry? Well, the idea is to follow a principle formulated by Konsevich and Rosenberg, which is that you would like to introduce on an associative algebra like this one A, a non-commutative structure such that when you look at the corresponding representation space, okay, so the moduli space of all representation of A of some over some fixed vector space of dimension N. So just think of matrices uh, representing the elements of A, which are N times N matrices. You want under this mapping to recover a usual notion. So in my case here, I will be talking about uh, Poisson. Uh, a Poisson bracket basically and some uh, associated structure. And then I will also build on that to try to introduce uh, some non-commutative version of integrable system, but you will see that it's not really complete. Okay, so yeah, let me stress again that really whenever I'm using a symbol with some indices on it, you just need to think of it as being like entries in a matrix representing an element of the algebra in some representation of the algebra. Okay, so how can we understand a non-commutative notion of Poisson bracket? Well, the a setup to understand it is just to think about a space M parameterized by some matrices, okay? So that the corresponding coordinate ring is generated by the entries of these matrices. And let's assume that the, there is a Poisson bracket on M, which is extremely nice. Okay, what do I mean by nice? That whenever you take the Poisson bracket between the entries of one of the generators and the entries of another generator, this thing will be given by just two entries of two matrices, which are just, a, let's say, polynomials in those generators. Okay. But look here at the important way the indices are placed. Okay, so here there is a matrix C, okay, which uh, depends here. The first entry is the first entry of the second matrix B. The second entry of C is the second entry of the first matrix A. And then D depends on the first entry of A and the second entry of B. Okay, so let's assume that all the Poisson brackets are like that. And then the question is, can we, in terms of symbol, understand this Poisson bracket? And there is a trick to do that, okay? So because uh, this uh, C and D are just depending on your matrices A and B, let's just consider a tensor product of these two matrices, okay? And let's just understand that if we look at the KJI L entry of this tensor product, well, we basically just get the Poisson bracket, okay? And so let's just look at this tensor product, okay? So this is what I'm denoting with this double bracket. This is just the tensor product of the matrices which are uh, giving us the Poisson bracket of A and B. And now is the thing uh, that I want to emphasize. And if you are not sure, you will listen to the rest of the talk. Just take a screenshot now because it's really fun to do this. Just try to translate what are the properties of your Poisson bracket in terms of this double bracket, okay? And so, for example, you will see that the anti-symmetry, well, basically, when you want to swap A and B, okay, you will get a minus sign. That's kind of obvious, but you also need to swap the two elements in this tensor product. Okay, so this is something easy to do, really. I encourage you to do that if you don't know what to do, or maybe this afternoon or in a week's time. Uh, but you can also write the Leibniz rules in terms of these matrices. And here, uh, let me just say that 
here, if we consider the lameness rule in the second argument of this double bracket, well, you will be multiplying on the left the first argument, and you will be multiplying on the right the second argument. In particular, when you look at this with the anti-symmetry relation, you get a Leibniz rule in the first entry, and you see that now you are multiplying the other element. OK, so there is something there. And obviously, if you have a Poisson bracket, there is a Jacobi identity that you can also understand in terms of this double bracket. But let's not look at that, because it, it's a bit more complicated, so not really difficult. OK, so if you understand what I've said, then you will understand what I'm doing, because now I will just be playing over an associative algebra instead of a ring of matrices. And this is the work of Vandenberg about these double Poisson algebras that I will now use for a few slides. OK, so. Uh, just some really important notation. If I consider an element in the tensor product of this algebra with itself, okay, then I will uh, several times write this element as just being a the element prime tensor second. Okay, so this is a kind of strong Swedish notation because all the operations that I will do are linear. So I don't really uh, need to be extremely rigorous and write the sum because everything goes well. And also there is this two one two, which means that you swap the two elements in the tensor product. You also have a multiplication on this uh, tensor product. But what is now important is that if we now just take this uh, double bracket that I introduced as a motivation on the previous slide and just consider the corresponding rules, cyclic anti-symmetry, auto derivation, and inner derivation, now as a map from the two copies of the algebra to the algebra tensor derivative itself, well, we get a structure which is called a double bracket. Okay, this thing is the non-commutative version of an anti-symmetric biderivation, which you will see in two sides. But if you are interested in a Poisson bracket or the non-commutative version of it, you still lack some kind of a Jacobi identity. So, how to get it? Let me just write it down without going into the details. But just to motivate it, if you have a usual uh, Jacobi identity to check, you have a Jacobiator, which is basically obtained by using twice your Poisson bracket on the three elements that you are cyclically permuting. And this is basically what is happening with this operation on three elements. Okay, so here this is why an associated triple bracket, because it depends on three elements. But basically, let's just see that it's really just using two double brackets on three elements and cyclically permuting them. But because remember that a double bracket is an operation with value in the algebra tensor itself, you have to be careful and know which element you will tensor. And so, for example, when you apply the second uh, here double bracket to the double bracket of B and C, you will just apply it here to the first argument of the double bracket of B and C. And then you do the same. You just have some uh, anti-symmetry rules to uh, uh, check so that everything goes nice. But what is more important is to say that this thing is a version of a Jacobiator. And we say that a double bracket is Poisson if this operation vanishes. Okay, so this is kind of expected. And as two nice examples, we have first, when you consider a polynomial ring in one variable, you have here a double bracket of an element with itself, which is, as you see, non zero. Okay, so you may say, well, with a the, with a usual Poisson bracket, you would expect the Poisson bracket of an element with itself to be zero because of the anti-symmetry. But here, because you are also swapping the two factors, this is not happening. Okay. Uh, and here, the second element, uh, the second example, it's a kind of non-commutative version of just a symplectic, uh, uh, the, the most trivial uh, canonical Poisson bracket, because you just have two uh, generators in your algebra, and they pair together to one. Okay, or a one tensor run because we play with value in the tensor product of the algebra with itself. Okay, so this is the notion of a double Poisson bracket. And why do we care about that? Well, basically because of this proposition of Vandenberg, which tells us that if an algebra is a double bracket, then the representations of this algebra, the n dimensional representations, okay, so remember this is the space which has for coordinate ring all the matrices which are n times n and which satisfy the relations of your algebra. This thing has an anti-symmetric biderivation which satisfy the rules here given by equation three. Okay, so let's just look at what this means. Okay, so here this is saying that if you want to evaluate the Poisson bracket of the IG entry of some element A, 
and the KL entry of some ln B. So just again, think of these as being matrices representing elements of your algebra. Then what you have to do, you have to compute the double bracket here written at the top, okay? Because it's in the tensor product of A with itself, it has two parts. And then what you do, you look at the matrix representing the first element, you take the KJ entry, okay? And then you look at the matrix representing the second element and you look at the IL entry. That's a very simple rule for computations. And as a, another part of this proposition, if in particular your double bracket is a double Poisson bracket, you get with this rule number three, a Poisson bracket on all representation spaces. Okay, so this is nice. And as a, an example, let's look at what I gave uh, on the previous slide on the, on the polynomial algebra in one generators. If you just uh, apply this rule given by equation three to this double bracket, what you get here is just your KKS Poisson bracket on GLN. Okay. And from my point of view, this notation is really convenient because you don't have indices. That's why for me, this is really strong. Okay, so this is nice. And this gives us a first dictionary, which tells you that a double bracket is in some way the non-commutative version of an antisymmetric bi-derivation using that rule number three, and the double Poisson bracket correspond to a Poisson bracket. So we could do integrable systems here. The problem is that nice integrable systems, and by nice, well, you will see what I mean, uh, usually different radius spa phase spaces, for example, phase spaces obtained by Hamiltonian reduction. So what can we do here to kind of fix the problem? Well, the idea is that uh, Vandenberg showed that there is another property that this double Poisson bracket has, is that, okay, look a, uh, after the lemma, if you take the double bracket of two elements, you get an element in A tensor A, you can multiply that, okay, you get just an element in your algebra, and then you can push that in this H0 of A, which is just a vector space obtained from A by just putting all commutators to zero. And the fact is that under this operation, you get a Lie bracket on this vector space, okay? So why is it important? Because this vector space has some geometric meaning, okay? So let me use the notation that curly X of A will just mean the matrix representing A, okay? So really the matrix representing A, it's IJ entry is what I was saying, this uh, symbol AIJ, okay? So in particular, because we have a matrix, we can take its trace, okay? On representation spaces, and this is GLN invariant. Okay, wh what is the action here of GLN just by conjugations on all the matrices representing elements in your algebra? Okay, so this is basically there to change basis on the vector space CN on which you are acting. Okay, and why is it convenient? Because this coordinate ring is in fact the coordinate ring of this GIT quotient. Okay, so in this talk, everything will be very nice, very smooth. So just think of this as being a nice orbit space. Okay, this repayant modulo, uh, the GLN action by conjugation. And what's happening is that Vandenberg tells us that the operation this Lie bracket on the top, in fact, uh, describe the Poisson structure on the reduced space when you consider GLN orbits. And the formula is extremely simple, okay? So if you want to understand what is this formula, so the trace of a matrix representing some element A and the trace of a matrix representing some element B, the Poisson bracket is given by the trace of the matrix representing this commutate, uh, this uh, AB, which is just uh, this map. So you evaluate the double bracket and then you multiply the two components together, as simple as that, okay? So this, this pushes a bit more this uh, dictionary between the commutative and non-commutative worlds, okay? So as you see now, we have this uh, Lie algebra, which is governing the Poisson bracket on this uh, reduced space of orbits. But there is something a bit more interesting to do and it has to deal with Hamiltonian reduction. Okay, so le let me just put uh, this slide and leave it with you for five seconds because this definition of a moment map I think it, it's pure genius, it's so simple. It, it's very nice. And <clears throat> as you would expect, so this definition of a non-commutative moment map will be the non-commutative analog of a usual moment map, okay? So here, uh, what is this definition? Well, it's just telling you that a moment map is an element in your non-commutative algebra such that the double bracket of this element with anything is of the form this anything tensor one minus one tensor this 
element A. Very simple. So just by writing the double bracket, you may clearly see already if you have a moment map. OK, but why is it so important, for example, to do Hamiltonian reduction? Uh, because if you know, apply the multiplication map to this identity, you see that on the right hand side, you get A minus A, which is 0. OK, so in particular, this uh, will induce that the Lie bracket that we had on this uh, vector space A modulo commutator written here on the top, this Lie bracket, in fact, descends to the uh, vector space now obtained from this A lambda. OK, so A lambda is just a original algebra where you quotient it by just putting your moment map to some uh, complex value lambda. OK, and then you take, you look at the corresponding vector space obtained by putting all commutators to 0. Okay, And so proposition, again, of Vandenberg. This uh, equation 6 was the same in the previous slides, slide. So in particular, it means that the uh, to understand the, Amil the Poisson bracket on the space obtained by Hamiltonian reduction, you just need, again, this formula, nothing else. And this leaves us with the complete dictionary that I want to use today. OK, in which we've added these extra three lines at the bottom that a non-commutative moment map will be such that the matrix representing it will be a usual moment map. OK, so recall that we have a GLN action. So this thing will be valued in little GLN star that you identify with little GLN. OK, so just the n times n matrix. And then this algebra where you quotient your non-commutative moment map by being equal to some constant lambda, it's the same as geometrically looking at the pre-image under the moment map of a multiple of the identity, multiple being exactly this lambda that we took. And then finally, the Lie algebra that we obtain on the vector space obtained from A lambda just govern the Poisson bracket on the Hamiltonian reduction. So this is a nice dictionary. So now the question is, how can you relate that to integrable systems? OK. so. Uh, let me just say that for the rest of this talk, I will assume that uh, this uh, orbit space rep a n mod GLNC or the corresponding Hamiltonian reduction, if you have a moment map, is a smooth uh, variety so that you can just consider it as a complex manifold. Okay. And then here, what I will just do is discuss okay, how can you in this complex manifold find big families of uh, Poisson commuting functions? Okay. Because the, the problem is that the functional independence, I think, as you may all guess, it's something purely geometric. So I don't think it's possible to understand it just on a commutative algebra. But, but I may be wrong. Okay. So let's look at, again at this formula that we have on the top, which is telling you that on the reduced space or on the Hamiltonian reduction, the Poisson bracket between the trace of a matrix representing an element A and the trace of a matrix representing B is given to be what? It's the trace of the matrix representing this thing, which remember is just first you compute the double bracket of A and B, and then you just multiply the two uh, factors in your tensor product. And so you have this uh, very silly lemma that if this, this thing appearing there is a commutator, well, obviously the matrix representing it will be a matrix commutator, a commutator of matrices, so its trace is zero. So the functions trace of curly x of a and trace of curly x of b will be Poisson commuting. OK, and so now the point is just to use that lemma as much as you wish. OK, and so a first way to use that lemma, which is, a well, really important in applications, is that if you can find an element in your algebra such that the double bracket of this element a with itself is a sum of terms of the form a to some power tensor something minus that's something tensor A to the same power. If the double bracket has this form, then the, mat uh, the matrix representing A is what we would call a lax matrix, meaning that the trace of any power of the matrix representing A, these things are Poisson commuting. And this is really just a two line proof. Okay, so again, if you are getting a bit confused now, take a screenshot and when you have five minutes, try to derive that from the axioms of a double bracket. This is really fun and easy. OK, so what is the weakest form of this lax lemma that you can use? Well, if you have a double bracket which is 0, then obviously this happens. Okay, 
And in particular, this is the case in that algebra that I wrote earlier. Okay, so this is the free algebra on two generators. Okay, the double bracket of each generator, uh, each generator with its service zero, but the generator, uh, uh, the double bracket between the cells is this uh, one tensor one. Okay. Here, Maxime, oh, uh, it's yeah. a five minute warning. Okay, perfect. Uh, so here you have a moment map. You can really compute it. It's uh, quite easy to see. But what is important for later is that the double bracket of this element y with its service zero, meaning that the trace of the matrix representing y to any power k will be Poisson commuting between themselves. Okay. So in particular, if this uh, this matrix is representing x and y, I wrote them capital X and capital Y, you get Poisson commuting elements here. Okay. The only thing is that if lambda is non-zero, you get here an empty space. If it, and if lambda is zero, you get the commuting variety, which is not nice, not smooth. So you need to add a, a something to get a, an interesting ex, uh, integrable system from this example. Okay, so how to add something? The idea is to understand that the particular example that I gave can be constructed with quivers. Okay, and Vandenberg constructed a double Poisson bracket and a moment map for any quiver. Okay, so what is a quiver? It's just a directed graph. Okay, so for example, you, here you have a one loop quiver. What you can do from this quiver Q0 is double it. Okay, so you add an arrow in the opposite direction for each arrow in the initial quiver. Okay, and then you consider the corresponding pass algebra of this double, meaning that it's the algebra of all the paths that you can do here. And you obviously see that here you can either go through X or Y. So it's really just a free algebra on two generators. And so, in fact, this example that I gave is a particular example of the construction of Vandenberg. And so what is the best way to kind of salvage the commuting function that we had? Is just to add a new vertex here. And we get this quiver Q1, okay. And quite nicely, when now you apply all this theory to uh, the pass algebra of the double of this Q1, look at representation spaces and so on and so forth. I will explain that in the second part of the talk a bit more. You get an interesting space, the Kerr mother space and the commuting function that we had are just defining the Kerr mother integrable system. So it's an important integrable system that you get quite easily here. So what else can you do? Well, instead of just taking a one loop quiver, you can begin with a cyclic quiver, okay? So these are all these arrows X uh, at the on the outside of this uh, circle, okay? Then what you can do is just add new arrows from a new vertex to all the elements in that cyclic quiver, okay? So I denote them uh, VS alpha. And then you double this quiver and by Vandenberg theory, you get a double person bracket and a moment map on the corresponding pass algebra. So why is that interesting? Well, because if now you go anticlockwise along this cyclic quiver with all these uh, doubles of the initial elements X, you get this Y bullet and the double bracket of this element Y bullet with its surface zero. So you will know that on any representation space, if it's non empty, obviously, you will get that the trace of the matrix representing this Y bullet to any power K, such traces are Poisson commuting. Okay, so this gives you a good candidate to find an integrable system. And basically this has work, been worked out by Shalik and Silantiev in several, lots of examples, but not any cyclic quiver like this. Okay, they had some restrictions on the framing arrows. But what is more or less important to understand here is that you can visualize all these Poisson commuting elements in some way at the algebra level. So for example, these elements of interest, this Y bullet to the K, this just denote going anticlockwise along the cyclic river K times. Okay, what are the other elements commuting with that? Well, you come from infinity, you go to S, to some vertex S with some element VS alpha, a framing arrow that we added. You go K times through the loop, and then we come back to infinity using the opposite arrow of this V. You get like that uh, an integrable system, and in fact, what you can do is uh, extend that to get, in fact, maximal integrability of the uh, any trace of y bullet to the k. This is some joint work in progress with uh, Tamash Gerber. Okay, so this is uh, the general idea of this non-commutative Poisson geometry and its application to integrable systems. And in the parallel talk, I will explain a bit. Uh, some details on this rational geometry system, 
how to get the elliptic geodrome of the system with such an interpretation, then explain how to get double quasi Poisson bracket and the relation to integrable systems. And finally, if you are interested to know where double brackets are, are happening to be in uh, mass, well, <laughs> I've collected uh, lots of application on the on my website. So just have a look if you think that something may be fun to look at. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maxime. So let's let's give Maxime a round of applause, uh, especially using emojis. Let's all use our emojis. Thank you. Um, thank you for the wonderful talk.